how the heck are we going to make sure that this employee's onboarding process is not only fruitful for them to where they're you know having a good time they're learning about our value systems about the company but that we're also making sure that they have an efficient and and quick really onboarding so that they can get up to speed and be running their business and their role quickly and so i'm going to give it to you the number one thing is to be prepared okay Woohoo! all right before I hit the snooze button, um, I'm going to take you through 10 steps, right? My formula to make sure that you have a really tight plan that is prepared for the employee before they onboard so that they are coming in feeling excited about the opportunity and that they are going to uh, get caught up to speed quickly and be really masters in their excited role. excited to be here and um, I'm excited to talk about this topic. Um, this is basically based on a conversion of questions that came in over the course of this week uh, from our Academy members in addition to uh, a, a somebody online who emailed me and asked me, Kaylee, what is the number one thing I really need to focus on when I'm onboarding a new employee into my company? And uh, so I'm here to talk to you guys about this. The number one top thing that you need to think about before you onboard a new employee. But while we're waiting for everybody in the Facebook group to join, and hello to IG over there as well, I want to make sure I tell you guys about my upcoming Performance for Profit Masterclass. And this is really a, an intimate, high-touch, 90-minute uh, uh, program where I'm going to take you through um, really the strategies that I learned in Fortune 500 and becoming a sales manager uh, behind building a team that is focused on producing profit. And this um, request came up because that right now with everything that's been going on in um, you know post-COVID pandemic and all this uncertainty and chaos and now kind of influx of business for a lot of aesthetic practices and this kind of like you know, surprising surge. Um, there's been a lot of staff, uh, I would say both um, opportunity and surprise in different roles. And um, there are plenty of practices who are, are not worried about the future, but thinking about how can I really take advantage of this time to up level my business, to put my foot on the gas pedal, to bring in a high performance team of people, to scale up, to increase my cash flow right now, my influence in the market, my autonomy, I want to level up. I'm looking to take things to the next level and I want to know how to do it. And so that's really what I'm going to go through in this training. It's going to be on August 27th um, at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. It's 90 minute. It is by application. It is free, but I want to make sure that your business is right, you know, in the sweet spot to make sure that you take advantage of um, the information that we're going to cover. So you can go to www.klcconsultants forward slash dream team. I'll also include the link both on IG and in this training and Facebook for you. So you can go um, register for that. We just ask you a few quick questions um, to make sure that, you know, we're going to be able to provide the best value to you. And you're in, you're in the hot seat. Um, it is not going to be replayed. There are no, this isn't going to be um, broadcast on social media. This isn't going to be available for you afterward. It's high touch, um, intimate. You attend, you get the work that you need. It's high level. Um, and, you know, if you can't make it great, um, if you can, then you're going to be able to take away all this good, um, good stuff. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dive in now. Um, we're starting to get um, everybody here on Facebook. Hello, hello. Um, and I wanted to talk with you today about the number one thing that you need to do to prepare for an onboarding a new employee in your business. Okay, raise your hand. How many of you have like brought somebody on board and just been like shadow that person? Just 
well, we're gonna wing it like oh no the new employee starting today woo like let's have her do that or him do that and then a day or two goes by and they're kind of like twiddling their thumbs now what do we do next i'm not really sure um okay I, we're all guilty of it especially if you're running a high performance business and you are up leveling and you are moving fast fast pace you have a big team right you have a lot of things going on and so it has to be an intentional thing to think about how the heck are we going to make sure that this employee's onboarding process is not only fruitful for them to where they're you know having a good time they're learning about our value systems about the company but that we're also making sure that they have an efficient and and quick really onboarding so that they can get up to speed and be running their business and their role quickly and so i'm going to give it to you the number one thing is to be prepared okay Woohoo! all right before i hit the snooze button um i'm going to take you through 10 steps right my formula to make sure that you have a really tight plan that is prepared for the employee before they onboard so that they are coming in feeling excited about the opportunity and that they are going to that they are going to uh get caught up to speed quickly and be really masters in their role okay all right so number one is going to be to create a checklist so what i would do way before in fact i even do this before i have hired that employee is i take a checklist based on what we're going to have them doing in the business um what you know it, things that are directly related to their role also things that are just directly related to the way that the business operates right like kind of what goes on in the business um and i create a checklist that includes activities that um talk about the company uh what you know they should be doing every day how um how involved they should be in each and every task i'm losing you insta sorry about that um and and then what i do is i separate that checklist and put it into number two a training schedule so now we have a training schedule so based on all these items that have been outlined you want to create a schedule for the first 30 days of training the the training process should we we can't just make it a one week of training because part of the process of onboarding that new employee is showing them what we expect of them and actually having sit down reviews and following up with them on how they're doing and so based on that i want to make sure that there's a training in place for them for the full 30 days okay the next thing to do is to actually look at yourself assess your your own level of competency are you how well prepared are you to teach them to do these certain aspects in their role and if you're not that's okay you may need to go reach out to talk to somebody who is better trained at a certain task at a certain strategy in your business um, perhaps you need to call some contractors or vendors or other people you work with and schedule that training out with them. So if they're going to be someone who's responsible for managing the results of, you know, how the marketing is doing, perhaps you want to schedule a meeting with them with the ads manager so that their your ads manager can really catch them up on what you're doing on the back end, right? So it doesn't all have to come down to you as the business leader, uh, but you definitely need to have a plan in place for them, okay? Uh, number four, adjust your own schedule. Make sure that you prepare the time in your schedule to meet with this new employee and make sure that they're on track with and happy with the way things are going in the training program. You really want to be able to sniff out right away if they're not getting along with someone, if they're not um they're falling behind on one aspect um if they really feel insecure or they're not excited about another aspect of it you want to know so that you can almost pivot and adjust the training appropriately okay um then number five is get organized so don't just wing wing it <laughs> like go here's where you go for that here's where you go for that actually download and put together every single aspect of the like the tools or the resources that they're going to need for the training uh, maybe you're putting a binder for them or some sort of you know a go-to place where they can go um, and and access everything in one spot and this is going to make it really simple for them it's going to make it easier for you so when you're referring to one one element um, it'll all be there right in the resource guide so you could be doing one activity 
and you're, you know, you're, you're maybe you're, it's something that, that it revolves answering the phones. And then there's a question that comes up about something clinical. You can have them go right to that manual and access it while they're on the phone. So things are kind of like right there and simple for them. Your phone script, your talk track, your policies and procedures, your handbook, everything is there really in one safe, convenient space. Okay. The next thing that I see um, overlooked all too often is really working what I call the why factor, right? So like, why are you doing the things that you do? Um, because a lot of times we just teach the tactic, we teach how to do something in the business, but we forget to explain to them, you know, why we're asking them to do that. And why, this is extremely important so that when it comes down to the time uh, for that employee to really be making independent decisions, they can go back and look at why, you know, it was explained to me that we treated this patient with in this manner because, and then when, you know, another situation comes up where I need to be able to uh, make a decision on my own, I can simply revert back to that why. Um, and if you weren't here last week, we talked about just as a prelude to this, um, creating a vision and values for your business so that that is something that is going to be the rudder of the business, really kind of like that moral compass, that North Star where that employee can always go back to. And that is something you're going to be wanting to, to repeat um, again and again through the course of the training program. And obviously have your other employees repeat that, okay? Um, then the next one is gonna be really about conversations and just being careful to make sure that they are outcome based. You want to make sure that and as you're explaining why you're doing something, we, we also want to incorporate those KPIs, right? We want to incorporate um, what we expect. How many do we expect? How many should that employee be doing a week? Um, how often should they be doing them? So we always want to talk about the outcomes. And really, this should be woven in through each component of training and included in that onboarding manual as well. Okay. And the next thing is going to be a really a mindset thing. You know, um, onboarding a new employee, uh, those of you who know me and my philosophy around team, I believe that bringing on somebody new is a huge opportunity to elevate the status quo for the team and the business, usually there's someone who's gonna come in, they're gonna really pull up the energy of the team, they're gonna be someone who uh, everybody's excited to have on board, they're bringing on a new element of the business, they're coming in with fresh creative ideas, different energy, probably different experiences, and I want you to really remember that it's going to take an investment in the beginning, particularly in these first 30 days, of, of being right on track um, investing in them, right? So you're going to be giving more to that employee in the beginning than they're going to be giving back to you. So try to remember, then think of this, I like to think of it like putting deposits in the bank account, right? It's not fun putting you, it's fun to have the money, but it's funner to spend the money. But think of it like the more you put into this employee, the more you're going to get out, right? And it's collecting interest while it's in there or as you've invested it. So be thinking about this as you know, not a frustration that I feel like I'm being bogged down because I have to train this employee. In fact, I would expect it to take between three and six months to really start to see a return on a new employee. And so get the mindset right around um, making sure that that employee is coming, you know, front of mind and that the, the effort that you're putting into that employee is going to be come back to you in full exponential reward later on. Sorry, I have to keep hitting this because uh, the Instagram is checking out here. Okay, and finally, this is a really good time to evaluate yourself as a leader and look at your systems, look at the strategies you have in place, look at really your formulas. Are you happy with the things, the way things are as you are teaching them to this new employee? Because I've seen this, especially as a business grows, you may have like your old handbook and you're teaching them some, something like, this is how we do it. But in the back of your mind, you might be thinking, well, we do it that way, but why? Maybe there's some way for us to really adapt or modify this particular portion of the training or the way that we do things in the business to make sure that we're, it better fits what the, the business is about now. And so take this 
um, as an opportunity to ask yourself, am I 100% happy with the way things are going? Do some things need to be changed? And make sure that they're set up the way that you want them for the future, right? So this is like a good time to just do a quick um, rehab of really that process or that system so that when the, another new employee comes on board, we already have things updated for them, okay? And then I really think that a review in the first week or two is really critical. Um, you've heard me say inspect what you expect, right? So if you expect an employee to perform or to deliver on something, we want to make sure that we're having a conversation to find out did they actually fulfill that? Um, you know, how many times did we do that? And I realize um, I get pushed back about this a lot. You know, in one week we're already having a review. Isn't that a little bit too much? Well, it depends on how many hours that employee works for you, but if they're putting in 40 hours of work or more, um, that is really a good time to say, you know what, let's tap the brakes here and make sure that things are going as needed, um, that you're feeling good about where you are, evaluate where you can, we can help, right? We wanna help you as, um, as an employer and as a team get, get to where you wanna go. And so it's a good time to have kind of that check-in. Um, another thing I like to think is that employees will respect what you inspect. So as rather than just having a listed out description of their job responsibilities, if you're actually having conversations, conversations with them related not just even to the tasks that they're doing, but also the behavior components and the value systems around the practice, they're going to know that that's something that's important to you. Remember, employees want to do a good job they want to be they want to win they want to be a champion for you and your business but it's up to us as business leaders to make sure they know how to get to that point okay um so in that review you want to look at the metrics you've laid out with them look at what they've accomplished through the course of time and i will as a caveat just reinforce that i wouldn't expect them to have um truly a um you know, an, an achievement of a certain goal within 30 days. This is really going to be a training period for them, okay? And the goal is really employee retention. The goal is to build entrepreneurs in your business and to, to have employees around that are gonna be part of building your culture and 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 the be the face of your business for a long time. And so this is so important to work on on the front end. I just can't emphasize that enough, so. All right, there you have it. The number one most important thing in onboarding a new employee is to be prepared. And so I hope you learned a lot from this training. Um, if you have any questions and you're um, watching this in the replay, hashtag replay and ask your question and my team will be sure to go in and answer those for you. And, uh, if, uh, and I hope you have a good Tuesday, yeah. All right, talk to you guys soon.